Autumn in Bucks County, with its rolling hills and multicolored leaves that dot the landscape, has often been referred to as its very own Sleepy Hollow. Part of that landscape is the Golden Plow Inn, anchored on the grounds of picturesque Peddler's Village in Lahaska, Pennsylvania. Stories of the supernatural, ghostly apparitions, and more have made the Golden Plow a paranormal hotspot. Now for the first paranormal investigation ever to take place on this site. Case number 572, The Golden Plow Inn, Lahaska, Pennsylvania. My name is Eric Mintel. By night, I'm a professional jazz musician. But by even later at night, I investigate the paranormal. I, along with my team at Bucks County Paranormal Investigations, travel the country investigating all things paranormal. This is Bucks County Paranormal Investigations. paranormal investigators. We're here with Ann Lipshay right here at the Golden Plow. Ann, can you tell us a little bit about the history of what's been going on here over the years? Yes, so this building is from the 1700s. It was the original post office for Lahaska. It was also a carriage house. So many people that were traveling during that time took their carriages here, they parked, they stayed. We've also heard there was a postmaster. Can you tell us a little bit about him? Thomas. Oh. He is the original postmaster for La Hasca. He is rumored to be the occupant of room 202. And I felt a woman in that room. So is there any other spirits in that room besides the postmaster? There have been sightings of other spirits. Um, Thomas is the one that everyone kind of can identify. So it's very possible that there's another spirit in that room. So when the people reported seeing Thomas, was it a full body or was it just an image or was it just the voice? They saw him, he was in a colonial garb and they heard his very strong masculine voice. Eric, we've got to check out this room. Thank God these guys are here. Maybe they'll finally validate what our guests have been seeing all of these years. Anne joined us on this part of the investigation and as soon as we entered the room, you could definitely feel a heavy presence. Now, when I first came in to the room, over in the other corner is where I saw the lady. That's why I was wondering. I decided to do an EVP session in 202. We understand that you've been in room 202 and you like this room. Are you here with us right now? Can you call out your name? Give us a sign. Unfortunately, we got no disembodied voices, but something strange did happen. I just got goosebumps. There's somebody in here, Eric. We now were not alone in the room. Something was in here with us. And Anne just was standing right here and felt like got the chills. And right now, the, it's kind of, there's a little residual energies right here. Point one. You can see that point one. Something is definitely in this particular area. It's also it's also affecting my it's also affecting my the flashlight. Flashlight. Look at this. Now it's going to point four. Uh oh. Oh, we're getting some here. Look at this. Anne, are you seeing this? I'm seeing it. I don't really want to believe it. If you want to see me and more of Dom, visit us on Facebook at Bucks County Paranormal Investigations. Facebook.com slash Bucks PN1. Suddenly, the magnetometer started going off the charts in this location. Then, the flashlight started doing the same thing. What is going on, Dom? That's weird. I don't know. I never had that happen. Now, 
That is very weird. Look at this. I can just feel it. I feel the heaviness. There's something here. What the hell have I stumbled into? Guys, I think I'm just going to leave this here and let you do your thing. I don't know what I just saw in there. I know I can't explain it. Visibly shaken, Anne left this part of the investigation while Dom and I continue to get strange readings in 202. Before heading to room 123, we decided to check on the ghostly goings-on in the basement. In the basement entrance near Peddler's Pub, a woman in colonial garb has been seen wandering around. She's been known for messing with the pub's locks. Village staff would have to acknowledge her presence, and only then the locks could be secured without issue. I investigated the bakery with reports of a child's cry and also reports of a woman dressed in colonial garbed clothing strolling a baby. Go for Dom. Go for Dom. My light is just, my light's going crazy in here, man. You have any problems over there? I'm kind of getting some kind of heaviness over here. Hey, Dom. Go for Dom. Do you still have the thermal? Yep, I do. I have the thermal with me. I'm scanning right now. Let me meet up over where you are. We'll scan over there. Good idea. Dom joined me in the bakery, and with the object detection meter and the thermal, we still found nothing in the basement to explain what we just felt. We then put a static camera in the bakery. After 30 minutes and no activity, suddenly, an unexplained mist started to form in the back corner. We zoomed in on it. You decide. We were getting ready to wrap up the investigation of the basement when Dom noticed something. I don't want to say anything, Eric, but I'm getting something. That something was an unexplained shadow on an otherwise completely open area. We also felt a cold blast of air when we opened the cage door. There's something there, Eric. 66. <laughs> That's very weird. I mean, there's nothing on the board. I don't feel that. That's that's a lot colder than 67. Whoa, yeah. When I just opened up that door, I just felt like a rush of cold air coming. Yeah, but it's all vented. Yeah, but that's there's nothing. There's no air coming through here. You know? No. And, and it's, 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 it's there's an no open air. cage. Yeah. And there's that was weird. With no further evidence, we wrapped up the investigation in the basement and headed to room 123. We're in room 123 here at the Golden Plow Inn. Now, this is the room that our client Brian had his unbelievable encounter with a full body apparition. I woke up in the middle of the night and I woke up because I heard voices. I heard hmm. someone talking. That was initially what woke me up. I, I looked at the foot of my bed, there's a man standing there. Hmm. And he's, he's not facing me. I'm looking at him from the side profile, and he's facing the door to the room, and he's talking. I can't make out what he's saying, and, and he's moving his arms a lot. There's a lot of hand gestures going on. The thing that stood out for me most about this man was, was the jacket he was wearing. This robin's egg blue collar. Think... Uh, Think a 1970s, early 80s wedding tuxedo, that kind of a color. And he's got this, this, this blue jacket, this horrendously out of style jacket on. And he, as I say, he's standing there and he, he's gesturing and I can't make out what he's saying. And uh, uh, I shouted at him and I said some rather unpleasant thing because again, I'm thinking this is someone who's in our hotel room. Who right. should be? Right. So I, I shouted some obscenities, and the guy turns and looks at me. And at this point, I, I can, can can see him head on, and he starts to talk to me. Now I'm hearing impaired. I wear hearing aids in both of my ears, and I don't sleep with my hearing aids. If I don't have those things in, 
Unless you're next to me, practically shouting in my ear, I'm never going to understand what you're saying. I'm trying to make out what this guy is saying, and, and he's still going on with his hand gestures. And I, I remember the look on this guy's face was very much, who are you and what are you doing here? Uh, pretty much, I, I'm sure, the same look I had on my own face. It was like we were both experiencing the same thing, looking at it from different sides. Mm -hmm. I went to turn on the light, there's a nightstand uh, 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 next to the bed and with a lamp on it. And, you know, w when you're in a situation where you have something that you perceive as threatening or not normal, you don't take your eyes off of it. And I never did. I was looking straight at this guy and I, I, I reached out and what I hit was uh, a bottle of wine that my wife and I had had a, a few sips from earlier that evening. and bottle fell, I remember hearing a clank. The minute I heard that clunk of, of this bottle hitting the floor, uh, the guy disappeared. And I'm not talking about like you see in a movie when you see a, a ghost disappearing, you know, he didn't fly away, he didn't disintegrate. It was literally just a snap your finger, there one minute, gone the next. Going over this way, there's the TV that there's a cable box that was blurred from his vision that he couldn't see. The one thing that very vividly stands out in my memory, behind where this man was standing, is uh, where the t television in the room is plugged into the wall. And uh, some, it must have been some kind of a power adapter. I had, it, had, it had a little green light on it. Uh, I remember right after he disappeared, I can see that green light and I wasn't able to see it before. So it was so vivid to me I, that I literally did not see a light source that was pretty much, you know, albeit a small light source, but in a dark room, even a small light source can, can be very bright. I didn't see that behind him. And I, and I, and I said, "Hun, just so you know, I, I, I think I saw a ghost last night. She told me at that point, you know, that when, when she woke up uh, in the middle of the night, she saw me sitting up in bed and shouting. She turned to see what the heck was going on and she didn't see anything at that point. The guy must have been gone by then. And it, it was, you know, I was looking for this affirmation, this, uh, you know, did you see this as well? And I, um, what I did get was affirmation of my reaction. Uh, you know, she genuinely th felt that I had seen something and I was reacting to something in the room. He's laying there. He's laying here, he sits up. And as he's sitting across, that person is standing at the foot of the bed. Right here. So right there where you're standing. Now as you move over a little bit more, right there. Now, because there's that light coming from the cable box that right. he said he couldn't see because the person was standing in front of him. I'm, I'm happy to be able to share the story with someone and, um, you know, if someone else experiences anything like this, at least they've got a, a point of reference, something yeah. to... Uh, come back to uh, th that they weren't the only one. You know? I'm feeling really weird in this spot right now. It's like a... Kind I, of, I, I like feel that energy. energy. Yeah, I'm feeling like goosebumps. I'm going to get out the thermal. I'll okay. take some pictures. All right. And I'll also grab and see the temperature going and see what else we get. All right, cool. Let's do it. I got the magnetometer to see if there was any residual energy readings. I went to the side of the bed that Brian occupied, and the meter went crazy. All right, we're on to something, 0 0.5, 0 0.6. Look at this, right here, it's going nuts. We went to the other side of the bed to check the energy readings and were shocked to find the higher readings were on this side of the bed. Oh my God, did you just see that? Not getting anything on the thermal. With no further evidence, we decided to wrap up the investigation. Dom, we do it again, man. It was a great investigation. Excellent. History? Strange anomalies and eyewitness testimony made this one of our most unusual cases to date. For years, vacation goers have made the historic Golden Plow Inn an integral part of their Bucks County experience. The inn merges current design trends with an appreciation for timelessness. Guest rooms and suites are fresh and comfortable, and there's always something to do. Book your visit today.